It is stylish, well-built, can measure ECG and a lot of other health parameters and can track your workouts with an app free of subscription plans. This is the Cardio Ring by Linktop, but is it really that good? Let's inspect. An AI lab wrapped around your finger. This is how they describe the cardio ring, something which looks like a traditional ring on the outside and on the inside, supposedly technical masterpiece or not. This is exactly what we are going to find out in this episode, figuring out whether it is a good way to track your health and also workouts sometimes. Great to meet you by the way, I'm the Tech Mishka. I review and explore a lot of cool and interesting tech, mainly focusing on wearables. And in this episode, it's gonna be a lot of testing and analysis in order to find out whether that's a worthy choice. We begin by focusing on the health tracking and just as usual, in order to get the best kind of results, you should wear the ring 24 seven for prolonged periods of time. And in order to achieve the most optimal results, you need to get the right kind of size. Cardio Ring can measure your HR, SpO2, sleep cycles, track some workouts, and also provide insights about stress and mental health, plus ECG tracking, which is perhaps the big highlight among all of these. You have to rest your palm on a flat surface and put a finger from your other hand on the ring, and there's gonna be a short test which can give you insights about your arterial fibrillation stats. According to Linktop, the company behind the Cardio Ring brand, accuracy is based on medical grade ECG and PPG chips. It sounds close to Aura Ring's promise to be 99.9% .9 accurate when compared to a dedicated medical device, and yet, the best kind of ECG is the one measured by your personal doctor. But I have to admit that for 40 seconds in cozy home environment, there's a whole lot of information that you may collect. Heart rate tracking also looks fine at the first sight. More about it in the workout section. There are three modes to choose from, with the most frequent snaps significantly reducing the cycles between battery charges. The sleep tracking is on the good side. Maybe close to what the champions in this area can provide. The ring is going to detect naps and can also measure different stages of the sleep, including light and deep sleep and the REM times. Also, SpO2 measurings are available. They're somewhat off because my usual rate is close to 97%, about 3 to 4% higher than what the ring detects on some of the days. And there's a pretty smart implementation for the temperature tracking, because the temperature on your finger is different to the forehead, and in order to help people to not get tricked, it shows deviations compared to a baseline. That's really smart and much more helpful than what other wearables with temperature sensors are currently offering. So overall, I'm happy with the results thus far, with some remarks around blood oxygen saturation measurings and the lack of menstrual cycle tracking ability yet. If you wonder whether the ring can track workouts, the answer is yes. Still limited amounts, but mostly we care about HR and movement in these occasions, so I feel that the list here is alright. Results might get close to what a fitness tracker, such as the Mi Band series, would do, and for the outdoor activities, it can use your phone's GPS signal. Here, the results do matter, and as usual, I'm having it side by side with an industry standard for accuracy, the chest mounted Polar H10 heart rate monitor. I've intentionally chosen these trainings to be rather short so that you can have better visibility of the graph and see where the ups and downs are notable. This is where we can notice the biggest disappointment about the ring, namely the significantly undercounted BPMs. This result is wrong by close to 40 bits per minute, and although the graph somewhat matches the polar drone line, it is by no means accurate, because in the peak moments, I know for sure that I was beyond 145 beats per minute on my heart rate. Meaning that if you want to get this ring for tracking sports, there are much better choices. Plus, no integration to Strava or whatsoever. That's been quite a hit, but let me say something good. I feel that the design is pretty nice, not only it looks good, but it feels good, very comfortable, especially for prolonged periods of time. So yes, when you sleep, you almost wouldn't notice that you have something around your finger. Plus, 
feels like rather scratch resistance. Given the combination between silver and gold, even if some deeper grooves occur, they won't be that irritating. The cardio ring arrives inside this tiny little box, maybe the smallest among all the smart rings of 2024, and inside here's the ring, a charging dock, the manuals, and a Type-C cable. Rather, a modest packaging, which is meant to deliver the product to you in a safe way. Currently, this is the only design option, somewhat limiting, but you can at least have a good choice among multiple sizes. To be on the safe side, better try it with the sizing kit first. I've risked with the size 12 though, which is a match to the size 12 of most other rings out there. Fits good. If the specs are what you're most interested in, here's the pack that I managed to put together for you. Up to 10 days of battery life, advanced PPG HR sensor, ability to measure ECG, a few tracked workouts included, solid construction, a few different size options, while working smartphone app, and the weight is less than 5 grams. That's plenty of promising sounding specs, or at least this is how Cardio Ring want them to sound. And maybe the battery life and the ECG would be the rock stars over here. Truth is that we don't know that much about the exact hardware sensors and the SOC inside, probably because most companies these days are really focused on keeping their secret sauce secret. Uh, thing is that if we don't know about all the details, it's difficult to predict whether Firmware updates for this body are going to bring any enhancements, if at all, and how far they can go in terms of improvements. But let's focus on what we already know. And I think the battery life is the big star over here because pretty happy with it. Per day, if I don't go for any workouts, it's consuming between 10 and 15%, meaning that it's among the battery life champions among 2024's smart rings. You can still fine-tune the behavior of the battery by reducing or not the snaps that the ring is going to capture in terms of uh, health tracking. And this is something that you can do through the smartphone app, which I want to show you right now. It is called Next Ring and at the first sight looks really good. The home tab shows most of the parameters at a glance and you can get the details about each of the cards. Maybe the interface is not that great yet, especially if we compare to Aura or Ultra Humans apps, but still very useful. The second tab is called Readiness, showing your current state versus the desired optimals. We have a dedicated sleep section, which is also very detailed. Although there are not too many explanations visible, you can make some conclusions based on the statistics displayed. I've already shown you the ECG, and this here is a collection of your previous recordings. You have the ability to export in PDF format so that you can share these results with a doctor, for instance. Some settings are available too. There's a cloud sync option, which is not on by default, and this is very kind from Cardio Rings developers. And whenever there are firmware enhancements, you're going to automatically receive them via the app as well. If we go further, and in order to have visibility over the complete picture, here's what I feel could be considered as a drawback. The price for sure, $360 for a smart ring feels way too much, no matter the hardware inside. This here costs more than almost every competitor I can think of. At least there's no subscription plan included with the app, which is good. The HR tracking and the SPO2 tracking may be inaccurate in certain cases. There's no gyroscope, which explains the not too accurate steps tracking. No metro cycle tracking feature in the app yet. The app lacks integration to Strava and Google Fit. And if you can think of something else, would be great to mention it in the comments below the video. In the end, this feels like a mixed bag because he has on one side fantastic design and superb battery life, which means rather reliable ECG and sleep tracking, a functional yet not as polished smartphone app and not as good HR, SPO2 and maybe step tracking with somewhat limited workouts. And given the price point of close to $360, having HR tracking, which is 40% off from, you know, just mounted HR tracker, sounds a bit disturbing. I still have the hope that firmware updates are going to make it a bit more accurate. And if we compare to the industry benchmark being Aura Ring, of course, uh, I think the latter still makes better sense if you want an overall better user experience. If you prefer the better battery life, the ECG functionality and the design, of course, you probably would enjoy the Cardio Ring 
quite a lot. So that's my take on it. And thank you very much for watching this episode. In case you want to get to know more about the channel, about the product or anything else, check the video description area. And if you want more cool tech inspections, subscribe to my channel. That's all for today. Thank you very much for watching it. I'm the Tech Mishka. Can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye.